Hey Rabbits, it's Trixie and I was really surprised how much attention my video thinks that even Germans do wrong in German aroused. I also received quite some criticism, which was partly caused by misunderstandings or the fact that some people just didn't watch the video until the end, where I for example say that many of the listed things are just caused by dialects and not to be taken as mistakes. This was my little compilation of things that even Germans do wrong in German. Some of them may be region related and they are more like a dialect than a mistake and of course none of them mean that you're stupid if you use them. But the other half of the criticism was completely legitimate and I want to apologize for my mistakes since it's true that I didn't get my facts 100% straight before I did the video. You can still believe me that I put a lot of work into my YouTube videos and I really do my best to manage being a full-time mom and doing the YouTube work at the same time. But even if I check a video for 10,000 times, there can still be things that are wrong or things that are misunderstood. So just remember that I'm just a human being myself and I promise I will learn from my mistakes and do better in the future. For example, I have been a little bit quick calling expressions wrong that have been accepted by the Duden by now or are indeed just some sort of colloquial language. Die Krake and der Krake are both fine. Das macht Sinn is an expression that you can use. It has been accepted by the Duden by now because too many people used it. So yeah, I was a bit too picky. Wrong was definitely an unfortunate choice of words and I learned my lesson. The lesson says, the pickier you criticize, the pickier you are criticized. Nonetheless, I had a ton of fun doing the video. I took the criticism as a motivation to do better in the future and I am now going to present you more things that even Germans do wrong in German. I promise, this time I researched a lot more and I hope you have fun with the video. Some things that I mention can be dialect related. One thing that also seems to trouble a lot of my viewers is the difference between dasselbe and das gleiche in German. It's somehow difficult to explain though because the English language doesn't really have this difference. It's again the German language being a little bit more complicated. Let's take a look at the sentence Wir tragen den gleichen Pullover. In this case den gleichen Pullover would mean that we are both wearing the same kind of pullover. We both went to the same store and we bought this pullover, but it's not exactly the same thing. If I would instead say, wir tragen denselben Pullover, then this would look like this, since we are both wearing the exact same pullover. The next thing on my list is the German word Rentier. Many people tend to write this with a double N, making it a Rentier. What they don't know is that Rentier has nothing to do with <laughs> Rennen, which means to run. The Ren in this word refers to a mammal that is deer-like. So they are basically making a running animal out of a deer-like animal. Another really common spelling mistake happens with the word der Standard. I guess it will not surprise you that it means the standard. When you look at the word, you can see that it's written with D in the middle and D at the end. But many people tend to write it with a T in the end, making it Standart, which would be a kind of standing. Trixi, was machst denn du da? Ach, ich dachte, ich probiere mal eine andere Standart. One of my favorites is the German word nämlich. Even though there is no 100% accurate translation to English, you could say it means namely, and we Germans use it when we want to emphasize that something makes sense or something is the consequence of something else. Let me give you an example. Ach, wie entzückend, dieses Kind sieht Ihnen aber ähnlich. Um, ja, natürlich, das ist nämlich meine Tochter. The problem with this word is that the ä is pronounced really long, so some people want to put an extra h after it, since this is what they are used to with other German words having long vowels. But unfortunately, nämlich is related to der Name and der Name also doesn't have an H in it. This mistake was done so many times that we actually have some sort of saying about it. The nämlich error is like a legend. The saying is, wer nämlich mit H schreibt, ist dämlich. And it means, who writes nämlich with an H is stupid. And of course, it sounds cooler in German because it 
rhymes. Let's go back to grammatical issues. There are two German words that look really similar. There is Zeit and Zeit. You can see that the only difference is the T and the D in the end. And of course, many people tend to confuse them. The explanation is that Zeit with a D in the end is actually the second person plural for the German verb to be. Ihr seid, you plural are. While Zeit with a T in the end means since. Knowing all of this, some sentences like Ihr seid doch alle doof hurt pretty much. Another word that causes a lot of confusion is a really tiny word actually. It is das. There is das with just one s and there is das with double s. And I don't really know what some people think. It must be something like, oh, there are two words that look almost the same. I bet I may just choose what I like more. But no, you cannot just choose what you want. There are rules for the two of them. Surprise, surprise, das with just one s is simply a German article. For example, in das Haus. You can also use it in relative sentences. For example, in das Lied, das gerade im Radio läuft. The song that is currently on the radio. The song that, das Lied, das, one s. But then there is another form of grammatical construction that requires the use of das with double s. In English, I only found the translation called that following a verb clause. And you often use it to express an opinion. I think that, I believe that, I hope that. And this is also the case where you would use das with double s in German. Ich denke das. Want to hear a sentence where you say das four times in a row? You can also use this to practice your German grammar knowledge according to what you just learned. Ich denke, dass das das Dasseler Museum ist. Another word that many people have problems with is the German verb spazieren. Spazieren means to take a relaxed walk, like for example in a park. What some German people do is writing this word with an extra T, making it spazieren, which is funny because der Spatz means the sparrow. So they are making sparrowing out of taking a walk. Something that is really similar to the dasselbe and das gleiche issue is the difference between the two German words scheinbar and anscheinend. And yes, this problem is again more on the pickier side, but there is a difference between these two even though it's really not a big deal if you use them as synonyms. Loosely translated anscheinend and scheinbar both mean something like apparently, but scheinbar actually refers more to ostensibly or pretended, leading me directly to the explanation of their difference. Anscheinend really just means apparently. If your best friend in school is missing, you can say anscheinend ist mein Freund krank, which means apparently my friend is ill, because this is like the most likely explanation for him not being there. Scheinbar, on the other hand, means that something seems to be true when it's not, and you know it. Let's say you meet the friend that was missing at school later at the beach, so obviously he is not ill. Then you can say, mein bester Freund war nicht in der Schule. Er war scheinbar krank, aber ich habe ihn später gesund am Strand getroffen. My best friend was not in school, so it seemed that he was ill, but I later met him completely healthy at the beach. To cap it all off now, take this sentence. Scheinbar und anscheinend bedeuten scheinbar dasselbe, aber eigentlich gibt es einen Unterschied. Another grammar topic that I want to address are people that use wo everywhere. Wo actually means where in German, and it should therefore only occur if I talk about places, right? But it is so nicely short and it just fits everywhere and it relieves you of so much thinking about genders and cases and... I understand, but everywhere? Der Mann, wo ich getroffen habe. Das doofe Kind, wo mich einfach getreten hat. Ach, das war Silvester, wo ich so besoffen war. <lacht> Ey, du Wo-Sager, ich weiß, wo dein Haus wohnt. 
Something that is pretty difficult in German, I grant, is the formal form of address. It is a big struggle for foreigners to understand when to be formal and when to just use the normal language as you know it. For example, French also has that. We use another form of address for people that we know, our friends and family, and another sort for people that we don't know or that we want to show our respect to. If I want to ask a friend for help in German, I would say, kannst du mir helfen? But if I want to ask the same question to a person I don't know, I would ask, können Sie mir helfen? And in this case, Sie is written with a capital letter. If I want to ask, can you give me your glass? I would say, kannst du mir dein Glas geben? to a friend. And können Sie mir ihr Glas geben? to a person that I don't know. Again, in this case, Sie and ihr is written with a capital letter. But this rule about the capital letter really just applies in the formal form of address. But many Germans tend to use the capital letter for everything. It's a mistake that is quite rare because most people, of course, get the rule. But it's especially funny when you find it, for example, in a magazine. Taylor Swift had all ihre Schuhe gespendet. What the author of this article wants to express is that Taylor Swift donated all her shoes. But if it's written with a capital I, it means Taylor Swift donated all your shoes. Was? Taylor Swift hat meine Schuhe gespendet? Alle meine Schuhe? Hat die dumme Kuh nicht genug eigenes Geld? Kann die nicht ihre Schuhe spenden? Jetzt muss ich hier barfuß rumlaufen oder was? Alright, Rabbits, I hope you enjoyed this video, the second part of things that even Germans do wrong in German. Again, I want to say that many things can be dialect related and of course, even if they are not, it doesn't mean that you're stupid if you use them. I also do many mistakes. I am definitely not perfect. This is not what I want to imply with these videos. I just want to give you an insight into the German language, make you feel better that even Germans are struggling living with this difficult language and yeah i hope you enjoyed the video see you in the very next one and have a nice beautiful day bye <laughs>